there has been nothing but the growth of the state, an Orwellian state, and we have probably never seen in human history a state, a totalitarian project, as total, as powerful, as high-tech as the People's Republic of China today. And the people of Hong Kong don't want to be a part of that, and they're making that very clear. By being on the streets, uh, two million, some 25 percent of the entire population of Hong Kong is on the streets. <laughs> The Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation is holding a forum here on Capitol Hill in discussion of Hong Kong's fight for freedom and democracy. My name is Vincent Michael Shkreli reporting for the Daily Caller News Foundation here on the scene. Activists as well as supporters of the pro-democratic protests joined together to embrace Hong Kong's struggle against the Chinese Communist Party. Among them was Executive Director of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, Marion Smith. Uh, this extradition bill that the uh, Hong Kong government tried to pass would essentially remove the uh, due process and rights that the legal rights that Hong Kongers have enjoyed for generations and make them uh, able to be um, taken into mainland China and um, you know subject to a totalitarian uh, you know legal system. <laughs> Covert murders, overt attacks on civilians, and even cases of torture, unsuspected rape of arrestees, which I needed to write about during the day, every day. The woman here speaking at the podium has chosen to remain anonymous. She is a defector from Hong Kong and remains an outspoken critic of Beijing. How do you see the future of Hong Kong? So I think the most concerning time would be 2047. Mm -hmm. So you might have been aware of the 50 years of um, no change in our way of life being promised to us by um, you know, in the in the Sino-British Joint Declaration. Mm -hmm. So and the deadline of that would be 2047. Hong Kong was ceded to the British Empire in 1842 and remained part of the empire until the 1984 Sino-British Joint Declaration. The declaration stated that Great Britain will hand over the island of Hong Kong to China in 1997. However, it will remain as a special administrative region outside of mainland China. By 2047, Hong Kong will cease to be a special administrative region and will be up for grabs for China. The idea that Hong Kong was going to maintain its autonomy and independence and freedoms when ultimately it was to be governed by the uh, Chinese Communist Party, um, that was probably a mistake, and I think uh, the British now realize that. No one really can say anything for certain about what's going to become of Hong Kong because there's just been no protection by any treaties, by any declarations on Hong Kong. And um, whether China would completely take over Hong Kong and really just tread into shreds. Carrie Lam and her predecessor uh, worked. They take orders from Beijing and they uh, whittle away uh, the freedoms and the rights of Hong Kong people. And so um, the, the demands and the movement, uh, I think, has turned into something that will not be going away. Among those speaking at the forum was artist Badu Chao. His works criticize the communist government and Chinese censorship. He is a dissident from China, but now remains in Australia. In China, it's really hard to be an artist, to speak freely. So I have this grand plan that I have to leave China for good in order to win me space to do the thing that I want to do. So that is the reason I have left China about 10, 11 years. I don't think I'll be able to get back to China uh, without being put into prison or even disappeared. Um, so here's the reality that I have to deal with. Yeah. 
if we don't take down a very uh, power thirsty regime and allow it to just get more prosperous, allow it to grow and allow it to really expand and get all the resources they need to create technology and to create um, gadgets and um, different means to control their people. I think that's quite feasible when you think about it. It would be like a new age of, uh, of totalitarianism. It would be Brave New World, it would be 1984. It's, yeah. it's already 1984. How would you respond to especially America's youth now who are studying in universities and who have professors basically flaunting Marxist ideology all the time in every single course, pretty much? Um, what would you say to students who are indoctrinated to such an extent where questioning them, they would become violent towards you? Yeah, well, it, we had better learn some of the most basic lessons of the 20th century. And certainly one of those is that Marxism, socialism, communism, these ideas have a 100% track record of failure. And they haven't worked anywhere at any time. And they've been tried in some 40 countries in the last 100 years and led to destruction, despair, poverty uh, on a scale never before seen in human history. So the ideas don't work, ideas have consequences, and it's obviously a failure of America's educational system uh, that some of the basic facts aren't taught. And of course, it affects today's political discourse. Mm -hmm. uh, have people talking about democratic socialism. I don't know what that is, but it's uh, no more desirable or, or clear a term than democratic fascism. Mm -hmm. uh, and to have a significant percentage of young Americans saying they would prefer uh, socialism as opposed to a free enterprise system. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I would like for President Trump to say he stands with the people of Hong Kong. Um, the PLA, the People's Liberation Army mm -hmm. um, Communist Forces, are uh, just across the border uh, of Hong Kong ready to go in. And this year's the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. The only reason they haven't gone in and you know, forcibly put down this movement in Hong Kong today is because of international opinion and the reaction of the world. It's not because the Chinese Communist Party minds killing their own citizens. They do that every day. 